This is Calgary's castle, also known as the Palliser Hotel. Join me as I take you along my captivating two night stay inside Calgary's palatial palace. From a culinary experience that you will not expect to unraveling the stories of over a century as Calgary's Grand Railway Hotel. Let's begin. Now this video was filmed in March of 2024, but we need to rewind to 1885 to truly begin the story behind Calgary's castle from the start. It was 1885 and an ocean to ocean railway had just been completed by the Canadian Pacific, connecting the Atlantic to the Pacific for the first time by rail. And 1888 saw the first Grand Railway Hotel west of Montreal at the Banff Springs Hotel, which was the focus in episode one of this series, and the Springs was a vessel to import tourists to experience the beauty of the rugged rocky peaks just west of here in Calgary. At the dawn of the 20th century, Grand Railway Hotels had flourished in the east, and Canadian Pacific's closest Grand Railway Hotel to the Rockies was over a thousand kilometers away in Winnipeg at the Royal Alexandria Hotel, as well as the home of the Fort Garry, which was a Grand Trunk-owned hotel both of which are obviously competing against one another, so with Calgary being less than 100 kilometers away from the Rockies, the spotlight turned for Canadian Pacific towards Calgary into a gateway to the Rockies and their newest crown jewel in the ever-growing catalog of Grand Railway Hotels. Canadian Pacific would begin construction on this new luxury hotel in 1911, and in 1913 the hotel was complete and named the Palliser, named after Captain John Palliser, this guy, an Irish geographer and explorer of the 1800s who led an expedition west to map from Thunder Bay into the Canadian Rockies here at the Palliser Mountain Ranges just outside of Banff, symbolizing a symphony of exploration and luxury at Calgary's newest hotel. The Palliser Hotel would open on June 1st of 1914 at a cost of $1.5 million, but the grand opening was overshadowed by tragedy because although this series is focused on the Grand Railway Hotels, Canadian Pacific had a huge fleet of ocean liners running from Quebec over to Europe and west across the Orient and into Asia. And two weeks earlier, the Empress of Ireland, a Canadian Pacific ocean liner, was sunk in a collision with a cargo ship just hours after leaving Quebec City along the St. Lawrence River, with only 400 of the 1,400 passengers surviving the sinking. And because of this, Canadian Pacific opted for a ceremony-free grand opening. Now, the Palliser Hotel received a lot of negative feedback from the city, citing that Canadian Pacific had built the Palliser too big and too tall. So in 1929, the Palliser would receive a four-story addition, transforming it into Calgary's tallest building, boasting over 400 guest rooms and suites, and was complete just in time for Canadian Pacific's new flagship passenger train, the Dominion, which would run from Montreal to Vancouver twice daily from 1933 until 1966. By 1940, the Palliser Hotel was a part of the growing list of Grand Railway hotels across Canada, fueled by the fierce rivalry between the Canadian Pacific and Canadian National Railways to offer the best rail travel experience, the most luxurious of hotels, and attract the most tourists. From the hotels that Canadian National had inherited following the Grand Trunk Pacific's bankruptcy, like the Hotel McDonald in Edmonton, to the Fort Gear in Winnipeg, or Canadian Pacific's brand new Royal York that had just opened up in Toronto, or the Hotel Vancouver, which today is the second newest Grand Railway Hotel in Canada and going to be the sole focus in next week's episode in this series in the Grand Railway Hotels of Canada. Now, in April of 1955, Canadian Pacific would introduce their next flagship passenger train, the Canadian, and departures would pass twice daily outside the Palliser Hotel in downtown Calgary here, but by the 1960s, passenger rail travel was on the decline. In 1966, saw Canadian National Railways demolish their station three hours north in downtown Edmonton to make way for the new CN Tower, which would serve as their new station and a symbol to their resurgence in passenger rail travel to come. And shortly after, Canadian Pacific followed suit, demolishing their downtown station in Calgary to make way for a tower of their own, the Husky Tower, or as we now know it today, the Calgary Tower, and it opened in the summer of 1968, and like any good pissing contest, it would double the height of CN's tower in Edmonton. Now this resurgence of Canadian passenger rail travel did not last long, because 10 years later, Canadian Pacific and Canadian National would hand off all passenger service in 1978 to a new government crown corporation we know today as Via Rail, while retaining ownership of their railway hotels. And service did actually thrive for a bit until 1990 when the Canadian government would then cut passenger service to Banff and Calgary forever, despite the fact in 1989, 170,000 passengers passed through the Edmonton Jasper Northern Route and over half a million through here in Calgary, outside the Palliser Hotel, ending passenger service into Calgary and the influx of tourists getting off the train from the Rockies and staying at the city's Grand Railway Hotel. Now the year 2000 saw the Canadian Pacific put a $28 million renovation into the hotel, and 2001 saw Canadian Pacific form Fairmont Hotels, 
and began to rebrand all their hotels as Fairmont, now making the Palliser Hotel the Fairmont Palliser. And today in 2024, the Palliser blends timeless elegance with modern indulgence, unmatched guest services, incredible views of downtown Calgary, where 110 years after its first passenger checked in, my journey begins here as well. Now we live in Vancouver, so we drove from Vancouver east through the Rocky Mountains into the foothills of Alberta towards the Palliser at the corner of 9th Avenue in downtown Calgary. And as we stepped through the grand doors, I was immediately captivated by the opulence of this lobby because when Canadian Pacific sought out to build a larger than life grand lobby, they absolutely meant it and the Palliser Hotel was no exception. Now check-in was an absolute breeze and although the true magic does await us upstairs, if I was to describe my excitement to stay at the Palliser, it would be summed up by our favorite corgi, Wally. Oh my god. Hey, look at this. We got a decent view. So this room is our home for the next two nights in Calgary. And this suite is actually, I think, bigger than my apartment in Vancouver, which I'm not sure if that's sad or just really impressive. But one nice personal touch Fairmont adds at all their hotels is that they are pet friendly and they provide a fresh dog bed and food bowl for all four-legged guests, just like Wally. And he absolutely loves playing in the snow. So he's really going to want a comfortable bed when he gets back from playing outside. And although I can't speak for him personally, but I can speak on behalf of Bella and myself, the Palliser has easily the comfiest beds we've ever slept in in our entire lives. And after walking back into the Palliser from the winter wonderland that surrounded it outside, I needed to rehydrate my skin before dinner. So let's talk about today's video sponsor, Tiege Hanley. Tiege Hanley is uncomplicated skincare for men. They give you everything you need, nothing you don't. I'm using the level one system here and it's got all the essentials you're gonna need from their daily face wash to the AM moisturizer with sun protection to the PM moisturizer before bed. I'll be using that later tonight and a twice a week exfoliating face scrub. I've been using Tiege Hanley for coming up on four years now. And because Tiege is sponsoring this video, you'll get 40% off your first skincare system and a free gift, the silicone body scrubby, which by the way, it's seriously awesome. A game-changing skincare system that I use and could not recommend anymore. And you'll see why they have over 7,000 five-star reviews. And thank you so much to T. Shanley for sponsoring this video. Now down in the Palliser's main lobby lies the Hawthorne Dining Room. And although this is the only restaurant inside the hotel, it's a pretty charming spot to have a meal and immerse yourself in. This afternoon, Bella and I are having the afternoon tea which is an absolute staple of the Palliser, offering nine different handcrafted teas from Earl Grey to Chai to Green Tea and more. But the main attraction here is the different sandwiches, treats, and scones on offer at their afternoon tea. Now these scones were so good. This house-made jam and clotted cream were absolutely outstanding. And to a point where I felt inspired to learn more about the magic behind these. And the pastry team was actually nice enough to give me a tour of their kitchen. From the croissants and pastries served up every morning as a part of their continental breakfast, to the desserts on their dinner service menu, to the same scones served in their afternoon tea that I was absolutely mesmerized by. This truly was culinary Disneyland for me. I spent a lot of time working in kitchens and bakeries in my teenage years, and even to get an appreciation for their historic bread oven that's been out of commission for about as long as passenger rail service has outside the hotel. This was awesome, and let's not forget about the legendary clam chowder, which is a timeless favorite that has graced the Palliser's menu since Calgary's oil boom of 1947. Now, I'll be honest, I did not know the chowder was such a big deal, otherwise I would have tried it, but over the next two days, from coffee to eggs benedict, almonds and more, this culinary experience was amazing, and even the fireplace that we are sitting at is original. It is the original fireplace that was here on opening day, June 1st of 1914, and has been untouched ever since. And the Palliser Hotel actually has a really cool tie-in to the dining cars on Canadian Pacific's long-distance passenger trains. I covered a bit in episode one of the Banff Springs Hotel, but at the dawn of the 20th century, a huge hurdle for Canadian Pacific was taking their heavy dining cars on their passenger trains through the Rockies, from the soaring peaks down the steep declines to the valleys below, without the risk of a huge accident. So the solution that they found was to build the Grand Railway Hotels so the passengers could get off and have a meal during their five-day journey across Canada but 1909 saw the completion of the spiral tunnels, which created an alternative route down the big hill, making dining cars in the Rockies a reality. And in 1955, when Canadian Pacific launched the Canadian, they would name all their dining cars after their Grand Railway hotels. From the Chateau Lake Louise, which was the focus of last week's episode, to the Royal York in Toronto, which is coming up in a future episode, to the Royal Alexandra in Winnipeg, to the Palliser Hotel here in Calgary, and the Palliser dining car named after it. And the hotel actually has some really cool paintings of the other Grand Railway hotels from the Chateau Lake Louise to the Banff Springs and the forever forgotten Mount Stephen House in Field, BC, as well as a few others. 
Now, the hotel also has their gold lounge on the penthouse level, and although I only have silver status with Fairmont at this time, I am working towards achieving my gold status so that I can get access to these panorama views and culinary delights on offer here. The Palliser also has a new gym, which considering it's a hotel gym, I thought had a really good selection of equipment. And right here, Bella is trying to show me what the Palliser spa would have been like since we did not get a chance to experience any of it while we were here. And last but not least, the reason you came to watch this video. You know what time it is. Cannonball! The Palliser Hotel absolutely exceeded all of my expectations. And although, keep in mind, I am born in Winnipeg, so anywhere in the prairies always feels like home and could be playing a little bit of a factor in my love and admiration for the Palliser. If you're in Calgary, you have to experience this Canadian Pacific icon. Yes, the rates have gone up quite a bit since 1914 when they debuted at $2.50 at night to today where it's hovering around 200 bucks a night. This is regardless, easily your cheapest ticket to ride, an integral piece of Canadian history. From the culinary experience to the beauty that surrounds every corner of its rooms and lobby, the Palliser is an experience fit for royalty inside Calgary's Palace. Although this is a story driven telling the history of the Palliser Hotel in my experience in 2024, this series is ultimately my tribute to the brave men that put it all on the line to map the West and build a coast to coast railway as a vessel to showcase the beauty of Canada with the rest of the world. Whether it's in my birthplace in Winnipeg at the Fort Garry Hotel or across the prairies at the best borough in Saskatoon to downtown Toronto at the 28 story palace known as the Royal York or the focus of next week's video, the Hotel Vancouver, which was the second last Grand Railway Hotel built in Canada. It's Vancouver's castle in the city and has been capturing my obsession to stay at for well over a year and the focus in next week's video. Hit the subscribe button so you can continue to come with me on my journey through Canada's Grand Railway Hotels and make sure that you don't miss a single episode in this series along the way. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you next week at the Hotel Vancouver. I'll see you then.